Welcome to another episode of Emerald Echo, a Green Lantern podcast slash vidcast. I'm your host, Adam, and with me is my co-host, Donnie, the Emerald Enthusiast. Donnie? What's up, Lantern fans? It's your personal power battery. It is the podcasting machine, the big nerd in green, the Emerald Enthusiast, here to talk to you about Green Lantern. You know, it's, it's we've already done a, an episode when I mangle the intro <laughs> right off the top. <laughs> um, but um, as you can see, Donnie is in his uh, ever-present, uh, ever-fantastic uh, collectible room. I mean, you can call it an office, but how much work does he would he really get done in there? Uh, he'd be in there <laughs> playing with toys. Let's 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 call a spade a spade. Uh, I call this the central power battery. This is where uh, I come to recharge. Uh, all right, so that's what I'll call it. Um, normally, I, because we're doing an Emerald Echo episode, I'd have a Green Lantern, you know, uh, uh, the background of, of Oa uh, f- behind me, but. There's, there's a practical reason why I don't, and there's an in-story reason why I don't. The practical reason why I don't is because Skype was being difficult today. And this is the one that it would allow me to. There we go. The in-story reason is something happens in the issue uh, of Green Lantern number two, which is what we're discussing today. And so I hightailed it out of there and went back to the back end. That's, the, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, <clears throat> Donnie, um, issue number two, give us the, the creative team info and a brief kind of catch up of where we are since we last left this book. Okay, well, we have, uh, was it Dexter Soy, Marco <laughs> Santucci, and Jeffrey Thorne responsible for the creative The creative output here, Green Lantern number two, Death is a Door is the name of the story. Indeed. So we see that several lanterns in issue number one died in the attack on Oa. And we also see that the one of the Gem World magic wielders is in the science cells and is declaring magic will return. So you see that their resolve is by no means dampened by the fact that they have been captured by, uh, at least the <coughs> members of the first attack have been captured by the Green Lantern Corps. Yeah. We also see a replay of the, there was a second strike, and that one killed the Guardian. Now That's the one that we saw from the end of the first issue. Yeah, the, the very end of that one. Now, again, I still question as to whether... There wasn't somebody else possibly working with the second attacker there, that assassin that killed the Guardian, but we we don't learn that yet. Um, And outside, we see a team of Green Lanterns and Sinestro Corps members and Red Lanterns and Kelly Quintella trying to take down the dragon that the assassin used. Now, the lantern energy doesn't affect it directly, but Guy and Kilowog they launch a barrage of rocks at it and immobilize it, which I thought that's one of the things that keeps bringing me back to Green Lantern, the creative use of the rings. So what did you think of that? I certainly thought it was an interesting way to do it, and it's <clears throat> kind of a call back to classic mythology in a way, because you know, if you think, <clears throat> you know, David slayed Goliath with a slingshot and a rock, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of, uh, I that's what I pictured. It's that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, that kind of uh, homage. I don't know if that's what Jeffrey Thorne was thinking, but that's what went into my head. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it, it, it was definitely a creative way to, you know, slay the dragon, if you will. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> I definitely like that imagery, and and I like the fact that, like I said, I always come back to Green Lantern and the creative use of the rings, you know, with a lot of other characters. Maybe you get, you know, kind of tired of seeing them use their powers in the same way. With Green Lanterns, you never know exactly how they're going to problem solve, and I think that is endlessly entertaining. Absolutely. So I do want to highlight a piece of dialogue here. One of the next scenes is we see a funeral for the guardian that has been murdered. Uh, Everyone, 
you know, in their uh, in their funeral dress. And uh, I want to read this word for word because I think Jeffrey Thorne has some just really some beautiful dialogue here. This comes from Nemocini, uh, which I think that's how you pronounce her name. She is the sister of the guardian who was slain. And she says this at the funeral. And uh, that's when uh, the, the guardian, his, his body actually goes back into the central power battery. It says, death appears to be the triumph of entropy. This is a lie. Nothing is ever created or destroyed, only translated, recombined. The universe oscillates. The multiverse branches. The omniverse endures. Linear time is an illusion. Death is only a door. Now, is that not profound? It really is. I mean, that's... I, I read that several times, and I was like, well, you know, again... Jeffrey Thorne knows his stuff, so I'm not surprised, but it's still very beautiful. The guy can write. The guy can write. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, really powerful stuff. And I mean, I mean, it, I, think, I think it works because it, it gets you emotionally. Mm -hmm. Like on a, on a brother or sister kind of level, like you could think she's saying that about a brother and whatnot. But it also speaks to the larger universe that we're in, you know, the omniverse, and talking about that. So th there's a couple things at play. You know, there's 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 a goodbye speech, a funeral speech, a send-off speech, and a, and again, they're teasing and hinting at the multiverse, uh, the omniverse, excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, does that mean I have to come up with an omniverse wise list now, Donnie? It's, it's <laughs> a, at the rate you're going, yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> Oh, but it's never going to end. Um, but, but yeah, so I, 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 I'm in full, full agreement with you on that speech. And just to, to, to echo, um, you know, about your sentiment that Je Jeffrey Thorne knows how to write. Do you know that he apparently wrote the season finale to one of my one of the shows I watch? That's that doesn't involve uh, capes, cowls, or. Or, or other and such. Oh, he has he has a huge. Uh, he, uh, he, has he wrote the finale to Magnum PI that just aired. Oh, that I didn't know, but I, I'm not surprised. Like I said, if you look over his body of work, it's massive. The guy's been around so, for yeah, and so and so I haven't watched the episode yet. I re I recorded it, but when I saw, I saw he tweeted and I saw that he wrote the he co wrote the episode. I'm like, that's pretty cool. Like I watched that show. Um, yeah. And so I'll, uh, I'll, ha I'll have to watch that now. Anything that he does, I'm, I'm interested and, in. And speaking of Omniverse Wives, Donnie, now, you know, because I've made the connection. The actress that plays Higgins, because, you know, they've, they've gender bent, they've yeah. gender bent Higgins yeah. on the show. Gender flipped, yes. Yeah. So that's probably the better phrasing than gender, gender flipped. Thank you. That's uh, there you go. So the actress that plays uh, Higgins on mm -hmm. Magnum P.I., She's on the list. <laughs> She's on the Omniverse Wives list. So. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Um, and it has further um, DC connections because the actor that plays Magnum also played Diablo in, in the Suicide Squad. Awesome. Yeah, cool. So back to the book, one of the big developments we see is that 1,200 of the 3,600 sectors are being vacated by the Green Lantern's by decree of the guardians yeah so, that, was kind of, that was kind of like a compromise they made with the, the, the united uh, planets yes I and so <laughs> yeah so we see that the core hierarchy is is changed uh and done so in a way where the green lanterns were kept in the dark and even salak didn't know and so uh you see some green lanterns have their rings seemingly deactivated and uh, Kyle is sent to Ragashoon. Guy is labeled an outrider. And he then say, says, those little blue beeps. You don't exactly know what he said, but you know it wasn't nice. You can fill in the gaps. Yeah. <laughs> and later, John questions the Guardians, and he was like, could you have handled that worse? Yeah. And, of course, they're perplexed by his emotions. And he points out, he was like, you know, Kyle and Jessica and Simon, 
they're no longer in sector 2814. So do you expect them to never go home again, to live out their lives away from their home planet? Yeah. And th that's a really good point there. And it, it's, first of all, it's a huge change to the Green Lantern mythology. Mm -hmm. A big shakeup to, to, to yeah. eliminate that many sectors. Um, Indeed. But again, what, what, one of the things I like about this book is that as I'm reading, I never can telegraph what's going to come next. Mm -hmm. A lot of books you kind of can, right? Yes. And that's not a, necessarily a bad thing. It doesn't mean the book is bad. It's just that we've been reading comics for so long now that you, you kind of get good at saying, okay, I think this is where it's going to go. And that's it. And oftentimes, you know, you have a pretty good shot of being right. Here, I have no idea what's going to happen next. And, no, and other, I, other than the things that he has already said definitely would happen, you don't exactly know how... Yeah, and how that's you get, part of the front of the book. Yeah, from point A to point B. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so... John is right. I mean, I mean, imagine that scenario in... I mean, you could equate it to the armed forces, I guess. Mm -hmm. Imagine they told you, okay, you're, you're stationed here, and this is where you will stay. For the rest of your life. Yeah, I mean, there can't be... You can understand why that wouldn't go over well. Yes. And like I said, we see that the Guardians, they're kind of perplexed by John's emotions. And we get some references here. Uh, Superman's origin, Fifth World, uh, Hyper Time. And uh, the Guardians and John talk about the Crux worlds. Originally, there were seven. And, of course, one of them was Krypton, which obviously Krypton exploded. And then... Water, uh, case uh, <laughs> if you're listening to something DC and you don't know that Krypton exploded, you're very new. <laughs> um, You've never seen anything in pop culture, huh? obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> They've been asleep for 80 some odd years like hell. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, that or you're five years old. And if you yeah. are five years old, yeah. You no, know, no, this, to... my niece knows about Superman. I mean, she's four, and I made sure. Hey, welcome you know. to the DC fandom. <laughs> yeah, but back, back to the issue at hand, one of the other worlds in the, the Crux world was Zanchi. And, of course, we know about, you know, John and Zanchi, the, the explosion of Zanchi. Yeah, and you of mentioned course, it last week or last yeah. episode. Last yes, last and of course, of course, he remembers that. So obviously, you know that is that is still in play here, and you know John obviously carries you know some guilt over Zanchi, but we see that John's duties will carry him to the dark sectors. Very ominous. That's something beyond currently the Guardians' ability to see into. Yeah, they're, they're basically it's unknown. They can't mm -hmm. see there. It's kind of like parts unknown. <laughs> Does that mean the ultimate warrior is going to show up in this book? I knew exactly where you were going with that. <laughs> because if he does, I think that'd be fantastic. Yeah. That's a gross old honestly. John Stewart, why have you come here? <laughs> so, but John, John just blasts him in the face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? So, Ultimate Warrior did have a comic book for a while, if you remember. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Really, yeah, we talked about it. It wasn't very good, but the art was good. The art was good, yes. So, John is like, well, well, how do I police the dark sectors all by myself? And the Guardians say, no, we're sending 1,000 lanterns with you. Wow. That's, and that's so, a... they get on this massive ship, and they head towards the dark sectors. You know what I like? I like the splash page of, like, where you see them all flying. Oh, yes. Yeah. When the Guardians are telling uh, we're sending you a thousand, you know. Mm -hmm. And that splash page, I'm like, look at the amount of characters and also still the amount of detail. It's, a, it's amazing. Like, yeah. these two artists are, without a doubt, in my opinion, some of the best working in comics right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the look of that ship, that ship, okay. Visually, it reminded me of something you'd see on Star Trek. Mm -hmm. uh, but very intricate. But I also it kind of, not visually, but it also gave me callbacks to the Green Lantern animated series because you know Hal and his crew would travel in the ship, mm -hmm. and I started thinking of the animated series. I'm like, oh, that was gone too soon. Yeah, it definitely was. And I got yeah. sad for about five minutes, and then I yeah. carried on with the book. 
Well, you know, if the HBO Max series is successful, maybe we will get a Green Lantern yeah. season Rest- two. Yeah. Re- re- restore hashtag restore the Green Lantern animated, animated series. series. Yes. No, I'm I'm down with that. So, but back to the issue at hand here. Before John leaves, he basically tells Kelly what it means to be a Green Lantern beyond just having the power. And he also yeah, makes... she's the, like, I'm a Green Lantern. Yeah, yeah and he's like, no, you not. are not. <laughs> he was like, you are absolutely not a Green Lantern. I think this is a fact. Yeah. Club. You could just send in a, a, a sticker and you're part of the group. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then the issue ends with a very massive event. Of course, we knew this was coming. And that is the destruction of the central power battery. Yeah. Um, and the destruction... It is absolutely magnificent in the way it is drawn. Now, you may think why somebody who's a Green Lantern super fan like myself would be happy over an event like this because it's a good, necessary part of the story. And you see the ramifications of the battery exploding. Everyone around it is seemingly killed. With the exception of uh, Simon Baz is caught under a dome because, remember, Kelly's gauntlet is not connected to the central power battery. So she is still able to make a construct to protect herself and Simon. So he's unconscious. As, as it, uh, he is bloodied, and we don't exactly know his fate, whether he is dead or alive. I think he's alive, but we don't know for sure. Well, I got. I, I want. First of all, that was a a really powerful image in that you know sort of Kelly kind of cradling the the Simon. Would be Simon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and I think it speaks to in the short span of time, how close she's gotten to both Simon and, and, and John. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. So, however, we see throughout the honor. By the way, Donnie, Go ahead. just before, before we talk about who, you know, the, 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 the surprise run-in, the, the run-in at the end. Um, yeah, but um, I, I really hope DC doesn't put it to a vote about whether, uh, whether, um, Simon lives or dies, because I'll tell you right now, Phil Bova will find thousands of ways to vote, and we know <laughs> they, and we know if he has his way, it won't end well for poor old Simon. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. Oh man, oh poor uh, Simon. Poor, poor Phil. I keep bringing it up, but it's too, just it's too funny. I can't, I can't help it. Well, but we see within the omniverse here that a lot of other characters are observing the destruction of the battery. We see the vanishing point, which we recently talked about on the Emerald Echo podcast, uh, where the linear men are from. And uh, that that was actually from uh, Superman Comics number 476, the original appearance, 1991. You see Mongo watching from from War, War, War World and... You also see. And we're going to talk more about Mongol when we yes. when we review Action Comics number thirty. And oh boy, yes. oh boy, I've mm-hmm. read it in advance. I don't know if Don. Well, I have, yeah, Donnie hasn't read it yet. But Not when Donnie yet. reads it, Don, when Donnie reads it, he's going to be as uh, uh, enchanted with it as I am. I'll just say that. Yeah. So and, and Mongol seems very pleased by the fact that the battery has well, yeah. exploded. Yeah, <laughs> he does. He's... And we also see Kyle Rayner depowered with his ring out in space. Now, he's in the Vega system, and there are a couple of beings around him, and whether he is is taken prisoner or he is rescued, I don't think he is dead at this point. He's alive for now, which is good. He's alive for now, but he is in a bad way because his ring is no longer functioning. And, and with Jeffrey Thorne and his ominous, you know, nobody's safe, kind of. Yeah. Thing. I'm getting a little worried for Kyle. Right? Come on. He Listen, keeps... He keeps listen, tweeting jo- Joker gifts at me, so that that doesn't make me. <laughs> calm. Listen, Je- Jeffrey, kill whoever you want, but leave Kyle alone. Yeah, exactly. Come on, man! Look, we're praising your book all kinds. At least the least you can do yeah. is spare Kyle for us. Why, why <laughs> don't you just, just keep bringing <laughs> Nort back and killing him again? I'd be fine with that. Like every other <laughs> issue, you know, he dies like Kenny from South Park or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, they killed Nort. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So, not long after this, we see a Green Lantern coming the, back to the way, shot of spy, uh, the Kyle in space there and kind of seemingly floating. That was a great visual. Fantastic. Yeah, it was. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and the, the War World one with, with Mongol 
And yeah, I mean, I kind of wish we had a larger image of Mongo because I venture to bet that if we pan a little bit, you know, more, we, if we had a wider shot, you'd see with popcorn, you know. <laughs> he's having a good old, yeah, he's popcorn, you know. He's having you know. a good old time with that yeah. show. So this he's, is the best thing on intergalactic TV, intergalactic <laughs> streaming I've ever seen. He He's rewinding it and watching it over and over. <laughs> he has to play it on a loop. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, but not long after that, we see a Green Lantern arrive on Oa. And of course, that is Sojourner Joe Mullane from Far Sector. And of course, her ring is different. And we see that Kelly has protected Simon in the dome we talked about. Yeah. And Joe arrives and she sees that scene of a bloodied Simon on the ground. And we hear that there are no other Green Lanterns, with the exception of Joe, no longer on Oa. So the ones that left are the only ones and Joe. Yeah. Like I said, what a what a what a massive <clears throat> shift for the mythology in the space of one issue. Incredibly powerful visuals and yeah. the I, I gotta say the narrative moves along. It takes you it builds, each scene builds on the previous scene, and we knew we were getting here, but nonetheless, it wasn't a slog to get here, to get to the destruction of the battery. Yeah, no, it, like, it, it was a, it was a very jam-packed issue, a lot of stuff happening. It was very dense. Yeah, and I like Jeffrey Thorne's pace here because since we already knew, but it never, but it never felt like you know it slogged along. Yeah, no, it never, it never did. And the fact that we already knew from Future State that the battery went down, I don't think he needed to stretch that out too much. It didn't need to be. I, I was going to mention that too because Donny, doesn't it seem, at least with this book, so far, I, I would say Green Lantern and Batman really, and to an extent. Kind of what's going, what's going to be happening in the Superman books with with, with John Kent. Mm -hmm. Those three books are really sort of hurling us towards for for their respective characters towards the events of Future State. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least that's what it seems from from my perspective. Yeah, um, and I'm not opposed to that. No, not at all. The, the fun of seeing how we got there, but again. I think in saying how we got there, I think there's still time for things to change to correct course. And before we rate this, I will say that Kyle being in the Vegas system, I think that could be the setup for Underworld on Fire, which you can vote for on DC's Round Robin. Remember, vote Green Lantern on Twitter and Instagram and the DC community. Okay, Donnie, we just got to talk about this for a second. I, I, okay. I got to believe that... We're in this final four, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I gotta believe that at some point, whatever wins, obviously will get published first. Mm -hmm. But at some point, they're gonna publish these final four. I would have to think so. Obviously, uh, you know, Blue Beetle is getting a lot of support in the other bracket. And I gotta tell um, you, I gotta tell you, I hope. I say, I, I hope it, it comes down to Blue Beetle and Green Lantern and then just publish them both. Oh, I would agree. I'm fine. Like, I'm fine with that. And here's why I say that. Blue Beetle, you know, and, and people will kind of probably, at least it's clear to me, Donnie, and I think Stephen and I mentioned it when we reviewed uh, Justice Society, World War Two, uh, which is available on YouTube and Poppy, uh, but seems to me. Thank you. I knew you'd appreciate that. <laughs> um, it seems to me that that DC, in terms of their animation division mm -hmm. and their TV shows and such, tend to be, you know, a testing ground or a preview of what they have planned on the film side. Yes, that's a good point. Yes. So now we know Blue Beetle is coming. Mm -hmm. 
you know, he's they've got a director, they've got a writer, you know, they're they're in pre, you know, they're in some sort of pre-production. They want to get moving by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. To me, to not have a book with that character in it when he's fixing to get a big budget feature is asinine. It would be the stupidest decision known to man. Yes, right. because obviously characters they they go through a bump in popularity when they're yeah. translated into other media. Yeah. Obviously, you know, there are people out there that say, hey, I want more. I want to go to the local comic shop and yeah. pick that up. And and Green Lantern, Green Lantern is getting, you know, the, the HBO Max series. It's it's earmarked for a film as well. Mm -hmm. Even if Kyle is not in the friggin' either the movie or the show at first. The more representation of Green Lantern you can have. And and gotta give gotta give Jeffrey Thorne a lot of credit in the world because it is a John Stewart book, like mm -hmm. he's the lead, but it is also a Green Lantern core book at the same time. Uh, I would say likewise. I mean, he's done his homework here. He knows he knows all of the lanterns in the core, and he's using them in very productive ways. But having another book, and arguably whatever gets whatever wins is going to be a mini series, correct? I don't think they're ongoing. I think they're mini. Is that how? I, I can't remember whether it's ongoing or mini. Uh, I want but, I want to say yeah, maybe it was a limited edition comic but book. I, but, but either but either way, like. I just, to me, publish all four. That's what I would say. And well, not, not just because, hey, if, if Green Lantern doesn't win, at least we got a shot. I'm not just saying that. I got to say, I'd be interested in, in, if I wasn't being asked to choose, I'd be interested in checking out all four. Oh, likewise, yeah. So, so publish all four. Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd read them. But listen, I'm shocked. And but I still want to win. Go Big Green. Oh, no, 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 listen. <laughs> and, and again, I'll say it again, and, and this shows you how much I, I'm intrigued by this Green Lantern book. I, you know I'm a huge fan. I've said it before, I've said it again, I said it last week, the last time we recorded. I'm, I'm a Batman Superman fan. Like, I, like I, literally, I literally have... They're not pajamas per se, but I got sweatpants and a sweatshirt <laughs> that are Batman that I wear to sleep, so technically they're pajamas. Yeah. I got Batman pajamas, and I'm not afraid to admit it at 37 years old. I don't give a damn. Um, but I'm telling you, as a massive fan of Batman in his world, and I love the writer Tim Seeley, like I really like him. Yeah. But if I never saw, like, if I don't get that Robin book, I'm not going to cry because Robin has a lot of represent. All the Robins have good representation. Right. Yeah. For the DC universe, and I'm I'm surprised at how how much. Blue Beetle is trouncing right now. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the Suicide that. Squad book because that has Harley Quinn, and Harley Quinn is one of the most popular. So I'm yeah. surprised. Yeah. Um, so I just I hope Green Lantern wins, but I say publish all four, damn it. Mm -hmm. um, but back to back to this Green Lantern book for now. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I just love um, Joe. Joe's, uh, you know, entrance here. It's, yeah. it's, um, it, it's fantastic. And I think, like I said, Jeffrey Thorne is clearly setting up what he kind of gave us a glimpse of in Future State. Mm -hmm. And also, I mean, we know Joe has a deeper role to play in terms of her future with the Justice League. So right. Right. could that be setting up some things? Mm-hmm. Well, again, obviously, you know, I've said on the Emerald Echo podcast many times, I really wanted her to survive beyond Far Sector. I thought that character had plenty of potential, and the fact that she's now in the main continuity makes me happy. So, Yeah, I mean, the impression that, that she... Yeah, right what here. A, what what three, a cover. Three ninety nine from DC Comics. What a cover. Yep. I got the alternate, too. That was the, uh, the Hitch variant, uh, the one that I joked about on Twitter. <laughs> and Jeffrey yeah. Thorne told me to go yeah. to my room. <laughs> yes, the, 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 I mean there was more cheese in that tweet than there was on a pizza. Uh, but I gotta say that cover. You know what it's missing? What? That cover is missing a construct of the Undertaker and Paul Bear. <laughs> why? Why is the under, Why are they not there? Oh yes! <laughs> Come on, Marco Santucci and Dexter Soy. Give me what I want—a construct of the Undertaker and Paul Bear. Yeah. I mean, well, Jeffrey like... Thorne is going to kill half the universe. 
I'm green either characters. You might at least give me it once. You know what I like here too? I don't know if I can pick this up on the camera. Far off in the background here, you see Sinestro. Yeah. And he's kind of, you know, back and, why you know. I, why, why, why in my head do I think he's going to hit one of them with a steel chair? Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. But he's kind of lurking in the shadows, you know, you know so. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, I would have, but overall, what a great, I mean, issue one was great. And, and it's like, in my head, I'm like, can you really keep up this, this pace and quality? And unknowingly, Jeffrey Thorne said, hold my beer. And he did it. <laughs> so, so, anyway, what was, would you rate this one, sir? Story five, writing. Oh, sorry, art five. Uh, yes. Art, I'm a, art. I'm going to say a four point five. There were a few backgrounds I thought could have used a little more detail, but as far as the writing, obviously perfect five. I really love where Jeffrey is taking the mythos right now. So, and, and just so Jeffrey Jeffrey knows, and the creative team, and also Dexter Soy and. Marco, Marco, San, Marco Santucci, yes. So, I have recently, you know, I have a, two lists, not not the Omniverse Lives list, <laughs> or my Twitter block. Well, I guess it's more than two, or my Twitter block list. I have two comic book pull lists. One is mm -hmm. a physical list, and one is a digital list. And I recently had to pare down and make some changes to my physical list. And I wanted to keep an even split of three DC titles and three Marvel titles on my pull list. That's a good strategy, yeah. And Green Lantern was so good that I, it had to make my physical pull list. That's not, not a knock to anything on my, my, phys, my digital pull list because I love those books too. But Green Lantern was so good, Donnie, mm -hmm. that it knocked, knocked Batman, Superman, the team-up title, to my digital list and then knock down the Justice League to my digital list. So yeah. that should tell you how good the Green Lantern book is. Yeah. A lot of important things, a lot of really important developments are happening right now. Yeah, it, it's a great book. and I don't care who your favorite Lantern is. If you like the Lantern mythology and the Green Lantern universe, you owe it to yourself to pick up this title and give it a try. Mm -hmm. I 100% agree. And there's a lot of allusions to the past here. Jeffrey Thorne is working in a lot of key points from the Green Lantern mythos. and But making them, he's you know fusing them seamlessly. So it's just a great experience at this point. Awesome. Yep. I can't wait till the next issue already. Likewise. Like, I know I don't like books that ship twice a month. But man, would I like this sooner than, than oh, yeah. <laughs> a month from now. <laughs> and I'm picking... Jeff, Jeffrey Thorne is making me hypocrite because I'm like, I don't like books that, that ship twice a month. But I'm like, I wouldn't mind if this one ships. <laughs> right. Well, I, I'm picking up all the variant <laughs> all the variant covers too because the art is so nice. So it well. is a multi month, multi. It's a multi week. It's a multi month book because yeah. when you get it, you get four copies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Donnie gets his paycheck and he's like, "All right, these go to the variant cover." These <laughs> go yeah. Uh, awesome. So. Awesome. All right. So uh, um, we hope you enjoyed that episode. <laughs> we. Uh, Certainly enjoyed um, sharing our thoughts about the Green Lantern issue number two uh, with you. Uh, if you want to continue the conversation about the Green Lantern book, the Green Lantern core, or the Green Lantern HBO Max series and speculation on that, you can on social media. Mm -hmm. Donnie, where do they find you? You can find me on Twitter as the Emerald Enthusiast. Let's talk comics. Let's talk collectibles. Let's talk Green Lantern. And if you want to talk with me about Green Lantern or anybody else in the DC Universe, you can. Although if you bring up Ambush Bug or Butterball, I won't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but, but you can talk to me. You can educate me on those two characters. He means Roundhouse, by the way. For those he, who don't was, know. <laughs> he is forever Butterball to me, Donnie. I don't care what they call him. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, my Twitter handle is at Adam underscore Leafs fan, and uh, we have the uh, the, the
podcast network has its own Twitter handle at MMNPDC. You can find me there. And if Facebook is more your thing, the podcast network has its own Twitter handle. You can the, the, the link is in the description below. Go ahead, click on it. I will add you and we can continue the conversation there. But until next time, keep reading DC, both digitally or physically, however you get your comics. Mm-hmm. And I personally hope that this Green Lantern run lasts forever. <laughs> From the first make up, major shakeup to Green Lantern continuity to the last. So long, everybody. <laughs> so long, everyone.